Today we are looking at making pretty panels for your model bear road. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Matt, I'm back, and I have a beard. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about making panels for your model railroad. Um, this is something I've been thinking about for decades now, seriously. I used to flip through the pages of Model Railroad Magazine and see all these big, beautiful layouts with these really expansive and impressive looking panels. And I knew I wanted something like that for my Model Railroad one day. Uh, and here we are. And, you know, now we're in the future. Things like uh, DCC Control and JMRI have kind of made those big, expansive, kind of crazy panels obsolete at this point. Um, although there's still reasons to have some panels on your layout. And so when I came to my layout, I knew I needed some panels, but I wanted them to look really, really nice. I didn't want them to look ragtag. I wanted a really nice, clean, nice looking panel that looked that looked good on the layout and looked like something you wanted to play with. So we'll bring the camera in closer, we'll take a look at this one, and uh, then I'll show you how I put them together. Okay, before we got into actually building a panel, I thought I'd show you one that was completed. So here we have a panel here. It's a pretty simple panel. It's just a printed piece of paper with some acrylic that I cut and uh, in, in, uh, put in its place here. And then I've drilled out some holes in order for uh, to allow me to screw it into the fascia as well as uh, holes for the um, switches themselves. So pretty simple overall. The only complication on this particular panel is this is a three position switch so I can turn on the programming track if I'd like, uh, but generally that won't be used. And then I have a, uh, a power indicator letting me know that I have power supplied to the entire model railroad, which actually is a, a pretty important thing. I, I've, I've uh, walked out of this room many times having not turned the power off to the layout, only turned track power off, um, but left everything else on and running. And so, um, seeing this little green indicator here is a little bit of peace of mind for myself, letting me know that um, everything's powered up and looking good, or uh, everything has been left on and make sure to turn off before I leave the room. So I think this looks pretty nice. I think it looks pretty clean, and I'll show you right now how I uh, went about making that. Okay, so my first steps were at to actually, well, measure the area that I wanted to have the control panels and then uh, design something to go in that area. So I measured, I figured four inches by six, six inches was a pretty good size for them. Uh, not too small that everything's kind of cramped in there, not so large is kind of overwhelming the space. Uh, so I, from there, went into my computer program uh, to start designing the panels. In this case, I'm using Adobe Illustrator, but you could use Corel Draw, you could use probably uh, Google Drawings. Yeah, there's a couple other like free programs out there for illustrating. And nothing you're going to be doing here is kind of crazy that requires anything special. It's just in my professional career, I use Illustrator, so I'm using Illustrator for here as well. Uh, I needed to design two panels. So here is the Sandpoint panel. I also have the Staging Yard panel right here. Um, I wanted panels that were simple, easy to use, easy to identify what was going on on the panels themselves. Um, I wanted there to be some consistency between the two. So I have a little uh, illustration of the, of the track plane itself above where the switches will end up going in the bottom. These black dots here represent anywhere where I'm going to drill a screw hole. And I made the black dots kind of smaller than what the uh, holes need to actually be in real life. Uh, basically because I, I'm lazy. I didn't want to necessarily measure the correct size. Um, I figured let's start, you know, we can, we can make them a little bit smaller and then we can uh, sort of widen those holes with a Dremel later on. And that way, um, you know, none of these black parts end up showing through on the paper itself. So I, I, it's, I'm, I'm playing safe when it comes to that. This gray box around the uh, illustration here is my cut line. I actually am insetting the paper from the edge of the acrylic a little bit. And that's because I knew that with my tools that I had available that I wasn't gonna be able to get perfectly straight uh, acrylic, uh, you know, perfectly straight cuts on the acrylic that there would be maybe some variation and, you know, with, on the acrylic itself. So by insetting the paper a little bit, I'm allowing the acrylic to be a little, uh, a little rougher around the edges than I would like, and not have to worry about the paper kind of like 
bringing attention to that by peeking out over the edge of the acrylic a little bit or just not being cut uh, perfectly flush with the acrylic, if that makes sense. And then when we get into actually building it, you'll see what I mean there. I put my logo in the corner here just because I think it looks good and it kind of reminds people where they are and that kind of thing. Um, somebody had asked on Instagram why I didn't uh, do what you kind of traditionally see in model railroading, which is a track plan. Then you overlay the switches on top of the track plan, which I think is a great idea if you have a very complex arrangement. If you have a staging yard with like, I don't know, maybe like eight tracks and you're not only like controlling power of the tracks, but you're also controlling, um, you know, turnouts as well in your panel. Something like that, I think makes a lot of sense. For me, it's simple. I just need to turn power on to three individual tracks. I'm generally going to be the one running this layout. So I'm going to be the one throwing power to those tracks. I know which one is track one, track two, track three. I don't really necessarily need a whole lot of guidance on that. Um, you know, in real life, I don't like having keys, <laughs> something I have to refer to to understand what uh, a, an interaction that I'm going to be engaging with uh, is going to do. Uh, but in this case, I think it's perfectly fine. Another reason why I put my switches down here at the bottom as opposed to like, you know, something a little more clever involving the track plan itself is because the upper half of this um, panel is going to be resting on top of uh, some one by threes that are actually holding up the layout itself. The lower half is hanging down below that one by three. And that's actually where I'm going to be placing the switches itself. So instead of having to like cut into a one by three and find a different way of kind of securing everything together, it's just easier for me to, to uh, do it this way as well. So there's a couple of thoughts going into why I laid it out that way. Anyway, once you're happy with it, once you think it's good, then you can go ahead and print it out. Now you can save it as a PDF and send it to something like Walgreens and have them print it on really nice paper and archival inks. I think that's probably the best way to go. What I ended up doing though, is I just printed it out uh, on my uh, office printer with some nice card, heavier card stock. Uh, and that worked out perfectly fine for me. When I did print them out, I printed out extras so that I could uh, ruin a few of them in the panel production process. Uh, and then have a, a couple really nice ones to use in the end when uh, everything is kind of built and ready to install. So let's take a look at the building process now. Okay, so I have uh, placed some um, painter's tape down on this piece of uh, thin uh, plexiglass here. And that's just to kind of help uh, with the cutting, make sure the edge stays clean, make sure that um, the blade itself doesn't ride up on the plastic in the areas where you don't want it to be. Um, this does have protective film on it, um, which helps out as well, but this just gives a little bit of an extra protection. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut along this line that I drew for myself here. Uh, I will be using for this job a uh, Dremel with a uh, plastics uh, cutting wheel on it. This is um, maybe not the best way to do it. Uh, you're gonna want, if you're gonna do it this way, you're gonna wanna go slow. Uh, make sure that you are uh, not, um, uh, make sure you are following that line nice and smoothly, as, as smooth as possible. I think maybe a jigsaw might be able uh, to get you in a little bit of a better position than, than what you can with a Dremel. Um, I tried a couple of different ways. I tried um, scoring and snapping. I tried scoring and snapping the uh, the plastic, and as you can see here, this it sort of gave me a really bad edge. And it actually, it didn't. I, I scored it, and then it sort of snapped off the line, so it didn't even it didn't even follow the line like it should have. You can see maybe from this this angle just how curved that line is. So the scoring and snapping method didn't work. I don't have a jigsaw blade. I I think with, with plastic this thin, I think a jigsaw is not a great idea. It, it just seems like it's probably not a great idea. Um, something like this, I think, from the tools that I have, something like this, I think, is going to work best for, um, for acrylic that's this thin. So I want to move it off of this hardboard, actually, because I don't really necessarily want to cut through the hardboard. I'm just going to cut through the plastic itself, and I'm just going to go uh, very slow as I, as I cut this uh, out right here. Oh, another thing. Uh, safety glasses. Do not forget safety glasses. Very important. Very important safety glasses. All right. 
So here we go. Okay, so I have uh, cut out the piece of acrylic and uh, the edges are kind of rough looking and I'm going to want to finish that up. Before I do that, I'm going to drill the holes that go uh, into um, this panel uh, at this time. I'm doing it this way because uh, in case I really screw up and I get um, a, uh, and I crack the, the acrylic or something like that, I haven't wasted a lot of time just kind of sanding everything and making things look great <clears throat> before I got to that point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I have this uh, uh, panel which is printed out on a little piece of kind of thicker cardstock looking uh, paper. And this is a sacrificial panel Essentially, this is one that's going to get destroyed in the process of drilling these holes, but I'm going to use it as a guide um, for where I want to place uh, all the holes in here. Uh, so I'm just going to eyeball it. <clears throat> I know that uh, because I'm, I use the Dremel, my edges are going to be perfectly straight, but I'm going to do my best by eyeballing it and kind of just trying to, as much as possible, place this panel in the center of the uh, of the acrylic and then we're going to tape everything down now one of the tricks is to inset your panel a little bit from the edges of the acrylic and that way if your acrylic isn't a perfectly straight line if everything is unaligned as perfectly and as wonderful as you'd like it to be, uh, people will be focusing on the much straighter edge of the paper than they would be on the clear acrylic that's sort of uh, framing it and protecting it. So at least that's the theory. All right, now that that's in place, we can get to drilling. Good, I am uh, ready to start drilling these holes. And the trick to that again is the trusty old Dremel. In this case, I have this kind of triangle bit on the end here. I'm just kind of using uh, the, the bits and tools that I have available to me to do this. There's probably a better way to do it than this, but uh, I unfortunately don't have access to <clears throat> some of those tools. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way. Uh, so yell at me in the comments that I'm doing it wrong and give your suggestions for how you would go about it. Uh, but first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill um, these holes out in these corners here and then we'll work on these holes in the middle. So I'm just going to start carefully and all I'm doing is a little bit of a pilot hole as centered as I possibly can get it. Now I'm going to need to widen those holes. I'm going to use actually a drill bit to do it. And this drill bit is sized so that my screws can slide through them just uh, uh, nice and easily. If you're going to use a drill bit, make sure you have a pilot hole drilled with something like this first. I've cracked many an acrylic plate uh, trying the other way. And the other thing to do is to uh, go as slowly as possible starting small and working your way to a larger drill bit. Here's an example of um, one that I just completely cracked and broke, trying to go with too large of a drill bit uh, at first as opposed to going small and then working my way up. So <clears throat> this drill bit's still pretty small, so we can get away with that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and align that over the pilot hole that I drove, uh, that I created and Okay, and I believe those are in good shape. Now, with that out of the way, we can turn our attention to these holes here. These need to be drilled larger. Um, they are gonna be where the toggle switches go. And so in order to do that, I need to, uh, uh, go ahead and drill these things larger. I'm not gonna use a, a drill bit 
for this. I'm going to use my Dremel the whole time. I'm going to start with a small hole and I'm going to work my way larger. This doesn't need to be the, the, this doesn't need to be the most perfectly circle, circular clean hole because of the way that I, I'm, um, I've got a little uh, cover that goes over top of the toggle switch that would hide any sort of um, weirdness with the shape of the hole. As long as it's large enough to fit that um, that that toggle switch, uh, that's all it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just start slowly and kind of work work these uh, these holes into kind of a larger shape. I am I do have a piece of wood here to to uh, work, drill into so that I'm not ruining my table surface. But uh, so you want to make sure that you are protecting your work area when you're doing something like this. Here we go. Okay, I have that initial hole cut, so I'm gonna switch to a different bit. I use this kind of smaller uh, bit here. That seems to work pretty well, so we're gonna go with that. You can see just how nicely that cuts. Now that I got that hole a little bit bigger, we're gonna increase the size of the bit. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and do the same with these other two. All right, now to sand this and to make these uh, these edges look nice again. I'm trying to, as much as possible to mimic this kind of clear, nice, smooth corner that I see on the top and to do it on all three of these sides, which I cut uh, when I cut it out of the sheet originally. So in order to do that, we're going to use some sandpaper. We're going to start with 150 grit. Once we get it as smooth as we can with that, we're going to move to 220. And then from there, I am going to move to a sanding stick. And I have this three-stage sanding stick here. Uh, and uh, that'll sort of clean up and make it look super nice in the end. And uh, yeah, this is just going to, all it really is at this point is elbow grease and, and, uh, and sandpaper. So here we go. Just smooth strokes. Um, Try and keep it as flat and, and uh, as perpendicular with the ground as possible. If you lean it one way, it's going to sand obviously at an angle and you don't want to do that. You don't want to kind of go back and forth. Otherwise, you're going to round that off. You don't really necessarily want to do that either. Uh, just kind of keep it perpendicular and just, just, it just takes time. Check it every once in a while to see if it's looking any better. Feel it with your fingers. And if you think it's smooth, but you're not 100% sure, just go ahead and sand some more. It doesn't hurt to sand a little bit more. Two hours later. Once you're pretty happy with the level of smoothness you're getting at this point, take your 150 sandpaper away, bring in your 220 grit. And this is just, you're gonna sand it down even more make it even smoother than, uh, than your fingers can really necessarily feel as you run along the edge. Three days later. Okay. If it's looking pretty smooth and you're pretty happy with that at that point, we're going to go ahead and finish this up with our sanding stick. Now I got <coughs> this the three step sanding stick, step one, step two, and step three on the back. It, this is a little too small for a, a panel this large, so I'm just going to go ahead and sand step one and step two at the same time, flip it around and do it that way and then we'll move on to step three at the end this is going to be our final sort of polishing phase where we take this sanded edge here and really just take it to a really nice um, smooth surface it doesn't take very much on this actually if you've done a good job with the other two pieces of sandpaper this gets it down pretty looking pretty darn good pretty quick okay now we're ready to pull off our protective film and see how all this looks and I'm covered in plastic shavings so we are going to want to clean up our surface a little bit after we do this that is a fairly good looking 
Yeah, that's really nice. That's actually a really good looking piece of panel. You can still see kind of that mar that that marred spot right there. Um, that, like I said, will get mostly covered up. So I think it'll be all right. You know, this is always look. Don't think anything in model railroading needs to be 100% perfect, and don't think that anything in model railroading needs to be like last 100%, you know, like this is the last time you ever get an opportunity to make this panel. No, of course not. You can always uh, use it, and uh, if you like it, go with it. If you don't, if it's annoying you, uh, go back later and fix it. Let's go on to installing it on the layout. Okay, so <clears throat> you can see right here, this is just a, a piece of temporary panel until I get the front fascia on this part of the layout uh, completed, but um, at this point you can do similar to what you did with the paper, just take the panel, stick it up here, trace out the areas where you're going to need to drill your holes and do that. Um, I, took the, I took the advantage of, because I just had this little bit of panel here, doing that at my workbench and then bringing it over here and tacking it into place. Next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and come into these holes and take a smaller drill bit and just drill some starter holes for whenever I go to hand screw in the panel. All right, let's go ahead and line this up with the holes and uh, get this screwed into place. Now I'm going to go pretty slow just because I don't want to like, you know, over tighten and crack it. Nor do I want to slip and uh, mar the finish. Now, I am going to take, I use this little, quite a bit, little can, a little duster can. And that's just going to get all the dust out from between the panes of glass so that I'm not running into that issue. All right, now I can start to tighten down those. screws and again don't go too tight don't want to crack it also don't want it to get so tight that I can't easily get it off in the future should I need to all right that looks looks good now we're going to go ahead and put in the toggle switches Okay, here we go, pretty good. And you can wire them up before you put these, uh, put them on the panel if you'd like, or wire them up after, it doesn't really much matter. They actually come in and out of that panel pretty easy, but yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so that comes to the end of this video. Uh, I'm not gonna necessarily show you how to wire this stuff up, it's pretty simple. Basically, you're running power to these switches before you run them to the track itself. Not a not a, a really complex wiring scenario, but um, uh, what I want to show you is just that, uh, you know, with a few simple tools, not even necessarily the correct tools, you can get the job done. And it goes by uh, faster than you would think it would as far as building one of these panels. And the results are really nice and clean and professional looking. And uh, yeah, I mean, you're talking about maybe $30 worth of acrylic. I think that's the most expensive thing you're going to purchase. And uh, the switches themselves are, you know, a couple of bucks a piece. Not, not, not a big deal at all. But in the end, you get really nice looking results. So hopefully this video has inspired you to go ahead and get started on your own panels. I know uh, if you're like me, you probably have been putting it off for way too long just because you're kind of nervous about, uh, you know, screwing it up and making it look terrible. But hopefully this video shows you that uh, with a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice, you can make it look pretty darn good. Thanks everyone for stopping by, and I'll see everyone in another video.